Okay, we have written another integral. We've got the integral from zero to pi, natural log one plus one over square root of two cosine x over cosine x dx. Okay, to get started with it, what I wanna do is use Feynman's trick on it, just parameterizing this part right here. The reason is just because we've got cosine here and here, I'm thinking when we differentiate it, we can actually kind of eliminate this cosine in the denominator. So when I do this, let's parameterize it with some variable a. And I'll write out our integral, 0 to pi. But now the numerator, I'm going to write this as 1 plus a cosine x cosine x dx. One thing that's going to be nice about this is if you notice, when a is 0, you plug that in, you just have natural log of 1 in the numerator. So that means our f of 0 value is just going to be 0. And before I differentiate it, there's actually not much problem with the convergence on this. The whole thing is going to be between 0 and 1, even though it's a little hard to see it, because you're going to have negative values on the cosines. One point that seems to be a problem is when x is pi over 2, you'll notice cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so it seems like we're dividing by 0, and it seems like that would be a problem. But it turns out the limit of the whole thing at pi over 2 is actually 1 half. So there's, not, so there's really not going to be any problems with the convergence of this thing between 0 and pi. So we'll go ahead and differentiate this with Feynman's trick. We're going to be differentiating with respect to a. Like, and like I said, the convergence is okay, so we'll bring it inside the integral and differentiate as a partial with respect to a. So when I differentiate this, the denominator, that's just going to be completely a constant. We've got no a in that part, so we're going to have integral 0 to pi. I'll write this up front, this 1 over cosine x. And then the derivative of the numerator, this is just going to be 1 over 1 plus a cosine x chain rule. The derivative of this right here is just going to be cosine x dx. But then I can cancel the cosines here, and we're left trying to integrate something pretty simple, relatively simple, just 1 over 1 plus a cosine x. But now for this integral here, it's in pretty good shape for a virus stress substitution. I have all the formulas I need over here to the right. If you want to see how I derived these, I did these in a previous video. So I can provide a link in the description to where we got some of this. So I'm just going to go ahead and use these values for the substitution. So first, updating the balance. If you plug pi in here, tan at pi over 2 is going to be infinity. You plug in a 0, tan at 0 is just 0. For our dx value, we have this right here, 2 dt, I'm going to bring this 1 plus t squared. The thing that's nice with it is the 1 plus t squared is going to give us some cancellation. Then we're just going to have here in the denominator 1 plus a, and then our cosine value is this thing, 1 minus t squared, 1 plus t squared. So then let's simplify. I need to distribute in this 1 plus t squared. I'll take the 2 up front as a constant, so we're going to have 2, 0 to infinity, dt, 1 plus t squared times 1, that's just going to be 1 plus t squared. When I multiply it in here, this is just going to cancel. I'll distribute in the a, and we'll have plus a minus a t squared. Now here, if I just kind of group this a little differently, put the constants together, so this is going to become 1 plus a for the constant terms. And then here and here, factor out the t squared, and I can write this as plus 1 minus a times t squared. But now when I rewrite it, what I want to do is I want to get this set up for our arctan formula. So what I'm going to do, so then let's factor out this 1 minus a. So we'll have 2 over 1 minus a. Then we'll have, then what's going to happen here is this 1 plus a is going to become 1 plus a, 1 minus a. But to set up the formula, I'm going to write this as square root of this whole thing, all squared. And then we just have t squared. But now we can apply the arctan formula on it. We just, we're going to want the reciprocal of this when we do it. So it's going to be just a little more complicated than usual. So, so it's going to be a little confusing with this whole thing. So we'll flip this and we'll get square root 1 minus a, 1 plus a. And then it's going to be arctan of this same thing again, square root 1 minus a, 1 plus a times t. And the whole thing's evaluated from just 0 to infinity. But now arctan at zero is just zero, so don't worry about that. Plug in infinity. When you do that, this piece doesn't matter. Arctan going to infinity. Arctan going to infinity is going to be pi over two. Notice there are some restrictions on this. I think for the a value, this a value, I mean, we know the a value is going to be one over square root of two, but I think for this to work, we need the a value to be between zero and less than one. 
So going ahead with this, I'm going to simplify this a little bit. Because we have 1 minus a and square root of 1 minus a, I can kind of bring it all under one radical and multiply these together and get this as 1 minus a squared. And then arctan going to infinity is going to be just pi over 2. Cancel out the 2s, and we've got our f prime a value. It's just going to be pi over square root 1 minus a squared. And now that we have this value, I just want to remember what we're doing, where we are, who we are, what's the purpose. So we want to get back to f of a because our ultimate goal is this thing which is just going to be f of 1 over square root of 2. So to get back to f of a, all I want to do is integrate on both sides, but we're integrating with respect to a here. Pi is just a constant, so I can bring it out front, and we can look at this as pi times the integral dA over square root 1 minus a squared. But this is just our arc sine formula, so this is going to be just pi arc sine of a plus c. So this is our f of a value, but now we don't want the plus c, so we can go back and use what we found earlier, that at 0, we should get back 0. So if we take this, we plug in a 0 for a, we're going to have pi arc sine of 0 plus c equals a 0. Arc sine of 0 is just 0, so that means we need c to be 0. And so in our formula, let's just make this go away, and we've got kind of a and now we've got a pretty simple formula here that our f of a is just going to be pi arc sine of a. So all I need to do to finish it off is getting back to this. We just need to plug in 1 over square root of 2. So what we want is f of 1 over square root of 2. That's going to be pi arc sine of 1 over square root of 2. This value here is going to be just pi over 4. Multiply it together for my final solution. We just get pi squared over 4. Okay, there you go. Good one today with Feynman Strick. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.